Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning into my classic car, home of the certified car nut. Well, this week we're back out in California to Jay Leno's place. Always great to see what he's got going. Jay! Oh! <laughs> oh, sorry, it's great, man. Uh, the door was open. I, uh, I just sort of. Uh, it was started... open? Yeah, well, you know, I just thought I'd come by and see what's going on. Yeah, oh, it's good to yeah, see you. Yeah, it's always good to see you. Yeah, yeah, sure it is. Well, today, the kind of <laughs> theme today, I think, is lightweight sports cars. You know, power to weight ratio is really what it's all about. And there's a whole generation of uh, sports car enthusiasts out there that don't really know what a lightweight car is. Mm -hmm. You know, even the new Corvette's about as light as it comes, and that's like 3,200 pounds. But back in the day, you had cars like the Lotus Elan, 1,500, 1,600 pounds. The fiberglass body car, Fiberglass right? body. These are extremely light cars. The McLaren F1 is probably the lightest of all the modern sports cars. That's this one here. Yeah. This was designed by Gordon Murray. This is about 2,400 pounds. About the really? Same That's as a, all that is? About the same as a Miata with 627 horsepower. Uh, this one also designed by Gordon Murray is a car called the Rocket. It's road legal. Headlights pop up. This is 775 pounds. And probably the latest one into this uh, foray would be the Ariel Atom. Uh, that was, these were designed in England. This one was built here in America. Designed by a man named Simon Saunders. Uh, in Europe, it uses the... Um, Honda Acura motor. Uh, I like American power. I wanted to build one using American uh, power plant. So we use the Chevy Cobalt motor, which I think is actually a better motor because it's fully balanced and the crank drives off the center and it's got a supercharger and that's about 300 horsepower. So wow. this has about the same power to weight ratio as probably the Bugatti Veyron. You've got close to 300 horsepower and it weighs 1,375 pounds. So you kind of you kind of start out here with the the Elans, kind of the early yeah. versions of of the lightweight sports cars. You mm -hmm. go to the supercars and the, the right. McLaren, but but these are these are out there. These are on the market. You can these are on the market. I've had this one a long time. This came out in '91. Uh, obviously, cars got heavier because you had to have airbags, door guards, all kinds of safety equipment. These cars don't have any of that. But if you want the thrill and the power of a 917 Porsche or a McLaren F1 or even a ZR1 Corvette and you can't afford that, if you're willing to do without a windshield, <laughs> uh, a windshield wiper, a, a door, a any body. of that. <laughs> well, see, you know, it's interesting because the real trick to building a supercar is not necessarily making it fast or making it handle. The real trick to selling a car that's half a million dollars is getting the windows to seal and the wipers to work, and all the little things. Cup holders. Yeah, but it's true, <laughs> no, but I yeah, mean, you're right, you're all right. those little things. So if you do away with them, if you do away with the doors, you do away with the windshield, you just make it, I mean, this is a strong, if you get hit with an SUV in the side of this thing, boom, you'll slide. This isn't gonna collapse. This is stronger than any door guard. Uh -huh. So you, you just, you're just a bit more out there in the elements. And you get a sensation of real speed. You know, when you drive a Corvette or a Porsche, and you're going 100, it's like, oh, it yeah, feels like nice, 60. Yeah. yeah, 60 feels like 100, <laughs> and that's sort of the opposite, and that's what makes it a lot of fun. I mean, bang for the buck, these kind of cars are just terrific, terrific fun. And in England, they do very well. In England, uh, something that's become very popular lately, something called track days, where yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you take your car to the track, and you could, you know, you drive around and race, and then you drive it home again. And that's what this is. This is basically a stock Chevy Cobalt. We've modified a little bit. Uh, 300 horsepower. 1,300 pounds, do the math. <laughs> and you see it fits in here pretty nicely. Indeed it does. Yeah. And that's, that's just, I mean, is that, is that a stock cobalt engine or what that's have you done? That's a stock cobalt engine. Well, we've tweaked it a little bit, but uh, it, basically it's stock. Yeah, I mean, it puts out more than enough power. Um, they say it's 300 horse, it's dynoing about 245, 250, but that's okay. It's enough to get the job done today. <laughs> It'll get you to the grocery yeah. store. And, and it's a lot of fun. But before we drive this one, let me show you this one. This is kind of an interesting car. This is built by Gordon Murray, who also built, the, as I said, the F1 McLaren. This one weighs just 775 pounds. It's a two-seater. That pops off. See, the person sits back there, and you put your feet up the side. You know, you're going to the gynecologist. <laughs> just nice. Have the, you have the stirrups along the side there. Uh, you've got a Yamaha 1000cc engine, 147 horsepower in the back. That's kind of tight. Well, this moves forward. Okay. See, the nice thing about this car is you can be eight feet tall because your feet go all the way up to here. It's rear engine. Um, it's 147 horsepower. You've got 12 speeds, six high, six low. It revs to 13,000 RPM. It just screams. So the power plant is what? It is Yamaha. It's a ah. Yamaha 
five valve Genesis engine motorcycle, thousand cc. So yeah, you can it's you can connect, rev connected to a Weissman transmission. Weissman, who does all the F1 gearboxes and did the transmission for the F1 McLaren, they built a special gearbox for this. So it's sequential, just bam, bam, bam. You just bang through the gears. It's fantastic to drive. And and these these little. Uh is that the, uh, that's the passenger handles? Those are the passenger grab handles. As you can see, it's almost like a birdcage type frame. You see how nicely done. This is not a kit car. This is a full out road car for the street. Extremely comfortable, extremely fast. So 700 pounds. Well, it's not 775, about 800 pounds. 800 pounds. Um, you know, as I said, your headlights pop up here. Yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's a great feature. Kind of cool. And the nice thing is it's so skinny, you, you know, when you're in your lane, you can go wide without necessarily crossing the double line. But it's, it's as close to driving an F1 car in the street as you could possibly, uh, possibly find. And just sticks to the ground like... Amazing. <laughs> and like I say, brakes last forever, brake pads last forever, because you're not stopping, you're not stopping 4,000 pounds. You know, it's amazing how technology is advanced in lightweight materials. This McLaren F1 weighs just about half what the Lamborghini Countach weighs. Lamborghini, Lamborghini Countach is almost 4,000 pounds. It's about 2,400 pounds, so just a little more than half. And, and is this, yeah, I see carbon fiber in the, in the fenders and stuff, also carbon or just uh, this, fiber? Uh, to, keep, to keep the price down, this is just lightweight fiberglass. That's got a lot of carbon fiber in it as well, but that chassis is a bit structurally more massive because that's got double the horsepower of this, but it's also got twice the weight. So anytime you increase horsepower, you, anytime you increase weight, you've got to increase horsepower. Is this considered a production car? I mean, do they, they, uh, still they make sell these? these in Europe? They're not really. They're, I believe this is the only one in the United States. When this came out, it was the same price as a Porsche, and I think it's easier to get the wife into a Porsche. <laughs> than it's, you know, even the Porsche is a hard sell. You show up with this. <laughs> hey, all right. So you're out the Oakwood Garden Apartments. You're making your own stir fry vegetable. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, you have to have a very understanding wife. <laughs> Unfortunately, you do. Yes, yes. So sequential transmission. Yeah. Yamaha engine. Glued to the road. Yeah, wonderful driving car. Got to be a blast. But that's the one we're going to drive today. And that works for me. This is built under license here in America. This one was built by a company named Bramo. They have since sold the rights to another company, I believe, in Virginia. And uh, it's a little bit different than the European model. The European model just has carbon fiber buckets. This has a little bit of padding, a yeah. few more creature comforts. Uh, I like this Ecotec motor. Uh, some people like the Honda motor. I just like going with the American stuff. Uh, it's an American-made car. It's an English car built under license by an American company. And incredibly strong. And cars don't get much more visceral than this. You're, no, so I would, your I, steering I would wheel say. pops out, and you've got all the electronic shift lights and you know, all the so, trick things. So there's no body per se, but no. all your protection comes from the, the, the frame, the right, cage, the frame. Right? And it doesn't flex at all. It's incredibly strong. And, and is it aluminum or no? No, that's steel, that's steel yeah. OK. That's steel. And carbon fiber everywhere. Carbon fiber everywhere. And What's the uh, transmission in it? Transmission is a GM Saab unit, five oh, speed. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So quite quick. Interesting uh, suspension system. Well, I mean. you know, it's fun because there aren't many cars that when you're driving, when you press the brake pedal, you can actually see the caliper working. You know, when you're sitting behind the wheel, you can look down and see the caliper do this. Uh, you can see the shocks moving. You can actually, it's a bit like when you were a kid and you bought that thing, the Invisible Man, you know? And you're trying Inside, to go right there. Certain parts were always missing on the Invisible Man. And the guys that bought the Invisible Woman, terribly disappointed by that as well. But the, the, the things that we had in common were all there. And this same thing with this, the things that has in common with most cars, your shock absorbers, your brakes. It's just fun. You get to see everything moving and going up and down, and it's a very basic elemental automobile. I mean, this is very F1 looking in terms of it the It is F1 the looking. This is your intake. You'll hear that supercharger screaming as we uh, get on the throttle. And it's really packed in there, too. I mean, but I yeah, guess you just no, pull this off and it's right there. Yeah, there's no wasted space. Easy to tune. Like I say, when you get rid of all the stuff you don't need on a car, doors, trunk, windshield wiper, radio, all that stuff, that's all a lot of weight. And what you have left is a basic car. Wow, and, uh, and it's, it's street legal? It's street legal, well, let's find out. <laughs> okay, it works for me. And your key works, you don't have a key per se. A neutral. And we're ready to go. Shall we hop in? Yeah, sure.
As you see, you have a full dashboard. You can pop this off. Tachometer, speedometer, all indicator lights as you would have. Horn. And you have shift lights on here. When you hit red line, it comes up pretty quick in this thing. I got, I got five on. Are there any more I can put on? I think you're all right. And you're ready to begin motoring. Yeah, you can see it all, man. I, I can see everything. The world is open to me under here. Everything. And you really get a sensation of speed being out in the open like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Four wheel motorcycle is not a bad description. <laughs> See the shift lights? Now to eat your Hemi Cudas alive. <laughs> Anything else on four wheels? Sometimes I think Jay gets a kick out of scaring the hell out of me and destroying my stash all at the same time. Funny how those two things usually go hand in hand. This little screamer can also give you a G-Force facelift. Just look at those wrinkles disappear. Let's let Dennis give it a try. <laughs> what do you think? It's almost straight. <laughs> that's, you know, that's from fear, not speed. Yeah, it really does. It does a number on the stash, yes. doesn't it? Man. Look skinnier than I am. Yeah, I had to tighten these down, Jay. We're gone. This thing's like a go-kart on an acid trip. That's right. If the excitement lasts more than four hours, see your doctor. The job of a riding mechanic is to always make sure the helmet stays on the, uh, the driver's head. Very important. You can't get these hats just anywhere, you know. And actually, these cars are more environmentally friendly. They cost less to produce, they use less materials, and they're very lightweight, and they use less fuel. And they go fast! Really, really fast. I have to say, Jay, I've never driven anything like this. It's pretty neat, isn't it? It is, a, it is an experience unto itself. Yeah. Well, it's really the only opportunity to get as close to an F1 car for the street as a, as a regular person could get, you know? When you hear that supercharger scream, I mean, it, it's like a banshee. Yeah. And only four cylinders pumping out close to 300 horse. You have two liters putting out about 300 horsepower. I'm getting 245 with the dyno. We need to tweak a little bit more. There's more power there. We'll get it. You know, if this thing wasn't so wasn't so rough on the stash, I think I'd probably get one. Yeah, oh, isn't it neat? Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's well, they do make a little windshield. Do they? Well, you know, you'll you'll have more and more accessories. You know, they actually make sides to clip on here. Oh yeah. In wintertime driving in England. Oh man, this thing's a rocket ship. Now Jay's got some wild cars, but this this takes the cake. It's a lot like that McLaren F1. It is. Maybe we can take that out sometime. We'll take that out. Yes. 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 yes.